Hey guys, let's take a look at two different things today. One's geometry, so get ready for that one. Um, the first thing is we're going to add fractions. You know how to add fractions. If you were teaching a little kid uh, to add fractions, and the little kid is looking at three fractions that are different denominators, you would tell him to find a two words, common enemy, no, denominator. Okay, common denominator, right? And the way to do that is you've got to know kind of your times tables to figure out what, you know, 6 and 8 and 12 all go into. For example, this is, I mean, you know, if it works for uh, numbers, it works for algebra. It's the same stuff. All you're doing is you're going, okay, you're telling a little kid uh, there's a 3, you know, I don't know, let's say it's uh, 3 eighths plus 1 sixth. And you tell the little kid, now 8 and 6 both go into 24. So that's going to be a 24 there and a 24 there. And you go, okay, now you did to 8 to get to 24, you multiply it by 3. So you have to do this times 3 as well. So you do whatever you do to the bottom, you do to the top. So that's 9 over 24. Now on this, you multiply by 4. So you go multiply by that by 4 as well. So 1 times 4. And then there you go. And then you, okay, that's 13 over 24. And boom, you're done. Okay, well, exactly the same thing you're going to do here. Exactly. So what you're, what you're looking at is, is basically taking this first and going, you know what, first, let's take an exciting new color. We'll, we'll do red. Okay, here we go. Something plus something plus something. Okay, I'm just going to copy down A and the B and the C and the X and the V plus E. I'll put them in parentheses. And a 4. Okay, well, we know that the common denominator is going to be 4 times x times b, right? They all need a 4. They all need an x. They all need a b. So all you're doing here is going, okay, that is, this has a b. I multiply it by x and I multiply it by 4. So I multiply by x and I multiply by 4, right? The second one, done, needs a, a 4 and a b, right? So I got need a 4 and I need a b. So there's my 4 and there's my b, done. The last one needs an x and a b, right? So this gets multiplied by x and a b. This gets multiplied by x and a b. The only kind of wonky thing here is that this thing, we're going to have to you know, distribute that x, b throughout there. But who cares? No big whoop. So we got 4ax. We got 4, we'll call it bc. And then we'll go plus xb times d. And then plus xb times e. And the whole thing is over 4xb, and everybody's happy we're done. Okay, that's it. All right, let's do one more, or a couple more, actually. Well, pause and copy if you need to. Well, we're going to have to figure out what the, you know, common denominator is on all three of these. And, uh, you know, I, let's just write them out here. I'm going to rewrite the way they already are here. So I got my 2a, I got my k. I got my BC over AX squared, and I got my M over AX cubed. Okay. Well, we know we're going to have to go, every one of those needs a 2, right? Because this is basically a 1 AX, that's a 1 AX. So they, the number is going to have to be 2, the coefficient. So <clears throat> it'll have to be 2, so it's got to be 2. And the A is going to have to be, I got A to the first, I got A to the first, and I got A to the first. So they're all going to have to have A, which they already do. Now I need, let's see, an x squared and x to the third. Oh, they're going to have to have the x to the third. All have to have it. All right, so that's going to be 2 and then a and then x to the third. That's my common denominator. So this must look like that. To get there, this gets multiplied by x to the third, which means so does the top. To get here, I'm going to have to multiply by x, right? Because x squared times x to the first is x to the third. And also a 2 as well. So I'm going to multiply this by 2 times x, <coughs> just like the bottom. This one's okay. A, A, x cubed, x cubed. It's just missing a 2. So 2 here, 2 there. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, and then we just, the last thing we do is plop it all over one denominator, kx to the third plus 2 bcx plus 2m all over 2ax cubed. And there we go. Simplify because it's just one fraction instead of three fractions. All right, pause and copy if you need to. Only difference here is that this lacks a denominator, which just give it one. That's all we need. Okay, well, you tell me 
what has to be in every single denominator. Okay, yeah, I mean, uh, in every single denominator, you're exactly right. I'm assuming you said the right thing. If you didn't, bad. No, wait, that's not it at all. Okay, no. They all need an, a one. No, no point in doing that. They already have a one. There's an A that needs to be in there, and there's also a K to the second power that needs to be in there, right? Okay, so let's actually go ahead and make this happen. You gotta have an A, and you need a K squared. Well, this doesn't have a K squared. It doesn't have an A either. I gotta do A here, and another K to make this K times K, right? So A times K there, so A times K up here. This one needs an A K squared, so this is gonna be a little A K squared. So you go, okay, A K squared. This one's already okay the way it is, so there's no point in changing it. So the first fraction, or excuse me, the first term is that, then minus the B and then AK squared, and then plus the CX, and the whole thing just goes over AK to the second. That's it, that's all you have to do. All right, let's take a look at our geometry here. These are called inscribed angles today. Well, first off, very quickly, an inscribed angle. Um, you know, we've dealt with central angles before, like this. Like if this is a, here, let's call that a central angle. A central angle here, let's say it's 100 degrees or whatever, okay? Well, that means the arc that it intercepts on the circle is also going to be 100 degrees. And of course, you know, a circle has 360 degrees total. But that's a central angle. What we're going to do today is called an inscribed angle, an inscribed angle. Now what happens with an inscribed angle is, is that the vertex of the angle hits the back end of the circle. It hits one side of the circle and then it goes like that. You can see the difference between that and the central angle, right? Here's what happens with uh, inscribed angles. If you have an inscribed angle, let's say this is 20 degrees, what will happen is the amount that it opens up on the circle, like the arc that it intercepts on the circle, will be double, double the inscribed angle itself. So if that's 20 degrees, this will be 40 degrees. Uh, you know, if that's 80 degrees, then this will be 160 degrees and so on, okay? And that's what inscribed angles are. That's all you have to remember, all right? Let's do a couple of examples on this. Find X, which this looks like some kind of a, I don't know, some kind of gruesome torture device here if you look at it at first, but it's doable, all right? Find X. First thing you look at is you go, ah, 40 degrees is an inscribed angle because the vertex of that thing is on the back end of the circle, all right? What that tells you is, since this is 40 degrees, this area, excuse me, the arc that it intercepts from here to here is going to be 80, all right? It's gonna be 80, which means, you tell me, what does it tell you about the rest of the circle? How much of this, all the way to there, not including the 80, What's the degree measure of that? How would you get it? You just take 360, right? And you'd subtract 80. Okay, well 360 minus 80 is 280. So something's gonna equal 280. Well, they tell you what's, what's gonna equal. They say from here to here, they call it 5x degrees. And they call from here to here, 7x plus 40 degrees. So this, in addition to this, is going to equal 280 degrees. So 5x plus 7x is 12x. Plus 40 is going to equal 280. That makes sense? Okay. You've got to know that the entire, an entire circle is 360 degrees. So 12x is equal to 280 minus 40, or 240. Well, 12 goes into 24 twice, so it goes into 240 20 times, and there we go. And we just found x. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at the practice set. Try A, give that a whirl, pause it, and see what you get and come back in a second. Okay, well, I mean, let, let's look at what we have to have. Uh, we're gonna have to have a three in all of these things, right? And the B, we're, we're gonna have to B in all of these as well. They all have a B to the first, B to the first, B to the first, so they're, they're good on that. The Z, that's something else we're gonna have to have. We're gonna have to have a Z to the fourth power because that's the biggest uh, exponent value. So. Our common denominator is 3 v z to the fourth. All right? We are missing z to the fourth on this one, which means we're going to do z to the fourth on the top and the bottom. We are missing a z to the first here, 
as well as a 3 to make this happen, right? So we're going to go 3 there, and we're going to go to C there. This one has the B, has the Z to the fourth. It's just missing the 3. So there's a 3 there and a 3 there. And that's it. We'll just go ahead and write this as one uh, fraction. MZ to the fourth plus 3AKZ uh, minus 3Y all over 3BZ to the fourth. There you go. All right. Go ahead and pause it and try B. Give that a whirl. All right. Uh, we'll just go ahead and write this as a 1 if you want to. And our common denominator, you tell me. What is it? A and then B to the third power, right? Okay. So we're lacking an A here. A there, A there. We only have B to the first power, which means we have to multiply by B to the second power on the top and the bottom to make this work. This is lacking everything. I mean, so we're going to multiply the entire bottom by, you know, a, b to the third, and then the same thing here, a, b to the third. This already has a, b to the third. We don't need to do anything at all. We're done. It's good the way it is. So let's go with our a, our z, our b to the second, minus, and then k, a, b to the third, plus 2, m, n, all over a, b to the third. And again, do not try to cancel this out with that because there's a minus there and a plus. Can't, you can only do it when they're being multiplied. So that's it. Okay, let's go ahead and try this geometry and pause it and give this a whirl. Okay, well this is kind of too close to the one we just did a few minutes ago. Anyway, if this is a 40, and since this is an inscribed angle, this, or y, we know what y is. That's going to be double 40, which is going to be 80. So we found y. Okay, we need to find x then. Well, x is going to be you know, uh, uh, well, if this is 80, everything else is 360 minus 80, which is equal to 280. Then I have 4x plus 20, and then 5x plus 80. That totals 280. So the 20 plus the 80 gives me 100. Then the 4x plus the 5x gives me 9x, plus 100 is 280. Well, 9x then will be equal to 280 minus 100. And then 9 into 18 goes twice, and then 180 goes 20 times. So there we go. Okay. That's our little geometry for today. And uh, you guys have a great day. We'll see you very soon. Take care.